Are you wondering what you're going to do while you're in lockdown? Well, consider this. So far we've made 117 episodes, that's 1750 minutes or 29 watching hours. So that means if you sit down for 6 hours a day you have 5 whole days of watch time where we take you sailing around Spain, Italy, Turkey and Greece. So grab some goodies, sit yourself down in front of your screen and start watching at episode 1. You'll have a ball. We haven't really slept well for the last three nights because of the uh, horrendous swell that we've been encountering and no wind. And I'm having a bad hair day. But you know what? I don't care. We're sailing our yacht past Ibiza. It's just over there. How good's that? <laughs> and where we're going, Formentera, is just ahead of us, about an hour and a half away. Not sure this camera will pick that up. We're about an hour away from pulling into the uh, port anchorage area of the island of Ponza. It's just after 5.30 on Thursday the 13th of September and here's something you don't see every day. Just over there where the sun's coming up, about 26 nautical miles away, is the volcanic island of Stromboli, also known as the Lighthouse of the Mediterranean. It's a bit exciting, we're just, just about to enter the Corinth Canal now, so um, check it out. I hadn't realised how narrow this canal actually is and the walls have just been sliced through, they're not reinforced with concrete or anything. We're coming up to a reinforced bit now, um, a very low wall on either side. This side is actually reinforced pretty much halfway up the wall. It's quite a high section, this, this part. Uh, We're just about to fill up our diesel tanks and the jerry cans because we ran out of fuel last night on the way in. <laughs> we are arriving at our destination for today and we're probably going to be here for a couple of nights. It's Karajarin and we're just going around this tiny little island here um, and we are going around into that little bay 
and there's a jetty there um, but they have mooring balls so we'll be given a mooring ball. Look at all the ruins on the top of that hill. You may have noticed a distinct lack of drone shots in the videos this summer and the reason why is because the gimbal vibration mounting on the drone here, the Mavic Pro, a little plastic piece snapped off due to this. And this. Well, today I've got the part to replace the broken bit. And here it is. It cost me 19 Australian dollars. And today is the day I'm finally getting around to replacing it. Now, bearing in mind, I've never done this before, but of course we do have YouTube and that makes me an armchair expert. I'm gonna take it apart, replace the broken bit, and put it all back together again. We've got a magnifying glass to assist my eyes when we get down to the small pieces. We've got a 1.5 uh, hex or Allen key here. And of course we've got our jeweler's screwdrivers and a pair of tweezers. We've also got the top off a herb jar and that's where we're going to be keeping the screws to save them rolling around all over the place and getting lost. This is not necessarily a tutorial, I just thought you'd like to see me do this and see if it works or not after I've finished. She's back together, so let's put the props back on, the battery in, and take her for a test flight, eh? And <laughs> see how well we did. done we did it some of you may know that I used to run meditation groups in Australia and a couple of weeks ago some of my meditation group members from the old days asked me if I would start up a group again we're all in lockdown so we all joined a conference app and we've had two meditation groups so far and it's absolutely wonderful there's a real sense of community in the group and we all benefited from it when we were meditating in Australia and it was lovely actually to all get together again even with the distance between us it felt as if we were in the same room feel that light let it just flow in and bring balance and healing so that's something that I feel as if I can do with some of my skills which is benefiting the greater community while we're stuck in lockdown here in Greece. A week after Australia, the UK and America celebrated Easter, here in Greece, Greek Orthodox Church celebrates this weekend. And this morning, I spied a barbecue that had been lit. And now that everybody's taken their food from it, I've put on some honey soy chicken. And here it is, all ready to eat, with some salad and some bulgur wheat pilaf. Oh, Baz! Uh -huh. Come and get it! All right. One of the things, in my opinion, that every boat should have 
is an EPIRB. An EPIRB is an electronic position indicating radio beacon. And should we be in dire straits and heading for David Jones's locker, our EPIRB, which is situated here in the cockpit, will float free and automatically activate and send information to the rescue services about where we are and uh, how they can locate us. Now there's a couple of things you need to be aware of your EPIRB. It obviously has a shelf life, in particular the batteries inside it. And we noticed when I was just having a quick look at it that the sticker on the outside of the float free casing has a, an expiry date that says it expires in August 2019. However, when we take the EPIRB itself out of the casing, inside the clear perspex, we can clearly see that the expiry date for the batteries is actually May 2022. I'm sure that that sticker inside was put on by the manufacturer, so I'm going to rely on that one, because I know this sticker on the outside of here was put on in Spain when we re-registered this EPIRB to contain our details. So I'm guessing that Mr. Whoever did the job in Spain thought he'd bring the expiry date forward to drum up a little bit of business before, before it was actually due. But because I saw only this date to start with, I actually did a little bit of research online and sourced out a complete service kit for this EPIRB. And if you come below, I'll show you what it is and tell you how much it costs. You might want to sit down for that. Trying to source an EPIRB servicing kit online was quite difficult. In fact, I had to get this from Russia. And the cost for it was 275 euros, which is around about 473 Aussie dollars. And there's not really that much to it. So the first thing here that we have is a replacement Perspex case. Then we have the lithium battery pack itself, complete with all the connectors that you need. This is the replacement O-ring, which makes the whole unit watertight. This is the replacement snap-free security unit. This little doohickey, which is a little bit of uh, nice padded foam, actually sits at the bottom down here, and the battery pack rests upon that. And they also give you replacement screws because you need to undo that one, that one, and that one. And then this unit lifts off and the battery pack moves, lifts out. They also give you battery expiry dates of stickers from the manufacturer, which in this case would be 2026. Which again leads me to believe that this is the true expiry date of this battery pack that's already in here. They also give you little stickers to also stick on the outside of the unit. So we, we you know, you would take these and put, you know, expiry, August, blah, 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 whatever. Um, and just a little bit of silica gel to go inside there um, to keep it moisture free. With the sticker on the EPIRB telling us that this is still good for another two years to 2022, there's no point really servicing this. Um, so we'll just keep the service kit handy um, so that when it does come time to fix this, then we can easily do it ourselves. Every EPIRB has a test button and there's instructions written on the inside of here that tells you what to do. So basically all you have to do is push the button. The red LED will come on. We should see some strobe slash and that indicates that the battery is still good and everything is functioning as it should. So we'll put this back in its housing and we'll keep our service kit handy for when the time comes to service that. An expensive bit of kit, the service kit. <laughs> Thanks for watching and remember if you want more in-depth detail and discussion then check out the blogs, the address is on the screen right now. We write a weekly blog from a his and hers perspective which is always quite interesting. Of course, if you like this video, leave us a big thumbs up and subscribe so that you don't miss out on future episodes of Sailing ABC. Oh yeah, that's what we want. We want a big belly rub. Yes, we do. Big belly rubs.